All right, ladies and gentlemen, hope you are ready for some wisdom of the ages. And today's topic is love's energy coming to us from the most famous Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, 1881 to 1955 he lived. He was a French-born Jesuit priest, paleontologist, scientist, and philosopher. Quite a few different areas there, ladies and gentlemen. But we are reading from Dr. Wayne Dyer's Wisdom of the Ages, and it is Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen, so you know what that means. It's time to do some Wednesday wisdom. And this wisdom from this book and this journey of all these wonderful authors and poets, a different one every Wednesday and every chapter that we read, has been very enlightening. And I'm starting to see now why it's called 60 Days to Enlightenment as the subtitle maybe removing the 60 days, but a path, a journey of enlightenment, of new ways of thinking in order to give us the capability of experiencing a higher quality of life. And so I'm going to try to do less rambling today. <laughs> Yesterday, I made it to 45 minutes. One of these days, we might make it to an hour, ladies and gentlemen, but that might be on a different subject, maybe a subject of my own rather than reading from Dr. Wayne Dyer. So I hope you got yourself a beverage, some hot tea or some iced tea or whatever your favorite beverage is. Maybe it's a <laughs> maybe it's a harder beverage than that for later in the evening, ladies and gentlemen. But loves energy. <clears throat> so this um I'll read a little bit more there about Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, because he's somebody that Dr. Wayne Dyer references in his lectures quite often. And so French-born priest, uh, paleontologist, scientist, and philosopher Pierre Teilhard de Chardin made his life work the reinterpretation of Christianity in the light of evolution. Hmm. He perceived matter and spirit as two distinct aspects of one single cosmic stuff without the need for any intellectual conflict. So that's a powerful subject in its own right there, ladies and gentlemen. But let's dive into and see what Pierre Teilhard de Chardin had to say in this little stanza or a little piece of literature that Wayne Dyer's chosen to focus on for today's lesson about love's energy. <clears throat> it begins... Someday, after we have mastered the winds, the waves, the tide, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. Then, for the second time in history of the world, man will have discovered fire. Powerful. For the second time in history of the world, the man, the man, man, we will have discovered fire. And the discovery of fire, ladies and gentlemen, is from somebody who looks at life in an um, evolutionary perspective. The discovery of fire was almost the most important turning point in our evolution. And so Pierre Teilhard de Chardin is telling us here that when we shall harness for God and for ourselves and for good the energies of love, the true, when we come to know the true power, capability, capacity, and ability of the energy of love and of love itself, then for the second time in history, man will have discovered fire. So Wayne Dyer begins, Pierre Tellier de Chardin writes here of a theme that, once understood by each of us, will have a monumental impact on humanity. He speaks of love and of energy as being interconnected, suggesting that love contains within it an energy that can unite human beings because it alone joins all of us by what is its deepest, by what is deepest within ourselves. And so think of the magnitude of what this brilliant philosopher of and man of God offers us with his his observation, this observation that is 
being talked about here, ladies and gentlemen, that this that love has an energy. And once understood by us, will have a monumental impact on all of humanity. In that this love energy is connected to the emotion of love. And so there is a way to possibly use or harness this love energy. So he says, think of the magnitude of what this brilliant philosopher and man of God offers us with this observation. He assumes that the time will come when we will learn how to tame the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, and I would say we're probably almost there, and to make them subordinate to our endless need to supply energy for ourselves as a people. Okay. Notice that all of these energy sources are movements orchestrated by an invisible power supply. Once again, I'll, I'll list them there because this is a key point into getting you know, these uh, spiritual or mystical ideas here and thinking of it practically. It's like when we, so the winds, the waves, the tides and gravity, when we can harness them, they all have this energy supply, this ability to create energy that we can then harness to use for our endless needs, this energy supply for ourselves as a people, but then notice that each of these sources, the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, are movements that are orchestrated by an invisible power supply. So this, whether you want to call it nature, or God, or source, or grand spirit, great organized design, G-O-D, whatever you want to call it, it's like there is this invisible power that is causing and orchestrating the movements of all of the natural sources that can give us energy. So this isn't really, you know, we're not talking about energy production, but we're talking about love's energy in comparison and how there is this universal underlying invisible power that is operating in the harmony of nature in all things. And that's something we talk about often on Tuesdays in Tuesday Tao, Do the Tao Now, living and learning the wisdom of the Tao by reading Dr. Wayne W. Dyer's Changing Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. But catch us on Tuesdays for that, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't yet. And if you're new here, thanks for being here. Smash the like button if you're getting value. Now, notice that all of these things are orchestrated by this invisible power. No one has ever seen the wind. All we can observe are the results of the wind. We watch the trees rustle and see the rain swirl in the air and feel the air on our faces, but the wind itself remains an unseen thing. So too with waves, tide, and gravity. <clears throat> you might be saying, well, what do you mean? We can see the waves and the tide. Maybe not so much gravity, so gravity and wind might be in a different category. But Wayne continues by saying, we watch as the waves move ceaselessly against the shore, in and out on schedule each day. And yet what it is that is what it is that is doing the moving remains impervious to our investiga investigation. So we see objects falling from trees, but what propels them downward? is also a mystery to our sensory apparatus. Now consider for a moment the latent power virtually untapped in love, ladies and gentlemen. All we ever get to see are the results of the energy. No one can agree on what or where it is, yet we all know and feel it when its results are made manifest. Within each and every cell of our individual humanity are in infinitesimal, so really tiny atoms, but an infinite amount. So a whole bunch of these really tiny atoms in subatomic particles. When we line up a given number of electrons within one atom of one molecule, we produce a force that is a mystery. I will not pretend to know the scientific formula 
But let's say theoretically that an atom contains 1 billion electrons. I'm glad he's getting into this because this is a very important subject that goes to the idea of the hundredth monkey or the, um, uh, forget what it's called. He'll probably say it here in a second. <clears throat> Uh, when we artificially line them up one at a time, one right under the other, eventually we, re we reach, uh, here it is, what physicists call a critical mass. And so we have to think about the micro and the macro here, ladies and gentlemen. What that means is the very small or the very zoomed in perspective and the very large and the very zoomed out perspective. It's like, you know, the daily to the long term or the minute to the massive system. Like if you look at the structure of, you know, the brain, <clears throat> all the little different synapses going everywhere. And then you look at the structure of, you know, the universe, that you almost get similar designs. And so there's these micro and macro things repeating themselves. And so this idea of critical mass is that once you know, if we can do this on the micro with cells, then it can also happen in the macro with people or animals, as the hundredth monkey story proved. If you've never heard of the hundredth monkey story, take a moment after this video to research that and teach yourself what is actually possible. Because there is a way that we can change based on a certain amount of us changing already and then the rest of us just goes bloop, bloop but so that's what he was describing here from a um you know physicist level so theoretically we get 375 million electrons lined up with the remaining 625 million fitting about fluttering about randomly when we align the 375 millionth electron a force within the structure of the atom propels all the remaining electrons to align as well. This point of the critical mass is called phase transition, the point at which the inner force within a cell or a molecule or an atom or a subatomic particle is activated to create this new alignment. So imagine enough of us getting to a high enough level to where the, you know, the the billionth person, the one seventh, or maybe the, you know, what whatever that be for you in your math, the the last person needed to reach this phase transition of a critical mass to a new level of consciousness for us, to a new way of thinking, that we all all of a sudden just start thinking in this new way. And if you think of history, you might see a few times where this may have already taken place where we've reached a critical mass and you could almost point out the point of phase transition <clears throat> so creating this new alignment this energy within a cell is what pierre Teilhard de chardin called love he put it this way love is the affinity which links and draws together the elements of the world. Now think of yourself as one cell and the total body of humanity, which contains some 6 billion cells, probably at the time of the writing of this book, now closer to 8 billion cells. When each of us aligns in a certain way, we too reach a critical mass. The field of energy created by that critical mass is love. Just as it does in the microcosm, it produces results in the macrocosm. So I was just, see, I've been studying this stuff so long. I like already know, <laughs> I already know what's going to be said. The micro and the macro, macro, ladies and gentlemen, or the material world as we see it, and the you know tiny little cellular world, or the maybe the world that we don't see, and so. Uh, Tellyard speaks of humanity reaching this critical mass and igniting the invisible force of love as equivalent to the discovery of fire. This begins within individuals, 
aligning in ways that spiritual teachers have indicated throughout the history of our world, ladies and gentlemen. And so Pierre Tellier de Chardin was both extremely well respected and virtually known, virtually unknown, wow, during his lifetime. As a priest, he was prohibited from publishing certain ideas. Hmm. That comes to no surprise to some of us, but we'll leave our judgment at the door today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And the major body of his teachings was not published until after his death. And who's to say if that was a good or a bad thing? The essence of his philosophy is that there is a mental and social evolution drawing us towards a spiritual unity. I truly believe this. I forget who it was. It might have been Helena Blavatsky. Um, leader of the theosophist movement, but it was one of these people that said there is a time coming where the the ideas, yeah, it was the idea that there is this time coming that there will be a great revolution, but it will not be like any other revolution that we've ever seen before. It will be this profound spiritual revolution much different than the industrial or technological or whatever kind of revolutions we've gone through it'll be unlike anything we've ever seen before i'll have to look that quote up again because it's a good one and she said this revolution will not be started by the leaders or you know the people that we typically think of starting revolutions it will just be common folk it'll be the grocery clerks and the you know the school teachers and the writers and the artists and the taxi cab drivers and the bus drivers and you know all of these just common people a salesman uh you know and wayne dyer uses this in one of his lectures and he talks about all the people that he you know works with in this field of self-actualization spirituality and psychology and you know, self-help and motivation is it's like all of my colleagues are just average people who happen to be very passionate about this kind of stuff. Wayne goes, I was just a school teacher. Zig Ziglar was a preacher. And, you know, all these other guys were just average people. And so I'm convinced, and he was convinced that we, ladies and gentlemen, those of us who are doing this work, are the leaders of this new revolution, what some people might call the Great Awakening. But, you know, that became real fluffy, too, when people started saying, oh, I'm woke, and I'm, you know, took it the wrong direction, but we are headed towards some sort of Great Awakening, ladies and gentlemen. If you can't tell, then you haven't been looking in the right directions, because I can see a lot of areas in life where things are going on and people are really waking up. Now, we could apply the teaching of Telliard, Wayne Dyer continues, by understanding that injuring a single human being is injuring the divine power within each of us, or what he sometimes calls the generic human being. So when you hurt any individual human being or judge or label or any of the things that we've been learning, you label and judge and hurt the generic or all of us human being and so i think i might have jumped a little forward there um <clears throat> do because we were talking about phase transition and critical mass and changing consciousness and this new you know this revolution that is coming that was talked about this great awakening and so love is the affinity which links and draws together the elements of the world now he was saying when each one of us aligns in a certain way, we too reach critical mass. And so reaching this critical mass, igniting the invisible force of love as equivalent to the discovery of fire. Chardon was both extremely and uh, well-respected and virtually unknown, back to, you know, his teachings were not published till after his death. 
But so the essence of his philosophy is that there is a mental and social evolution drawing us towards a spiritual unity. We need only to imagine our ability to love developing until it embraces the totality of men and of earth. He called this latent energy of love the universal synthesizer. Love is an energizing elixir with a power to nurture and bring together humanity in much the same way that cavemen were drawn to the first bonfire. Imagine if you, if you will, a similar state of wonder. <laughs> okay, I started that sentence silly. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, a similar state of wonder and the impact on our survival of a discovery with the magnitude of fire, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we can apply the teachings of Tellyard by understanding that injuring a single human being is injuring this divine power within each of us. This universal th synthesizer love is part of all of us, just as each electron shares the force with its within the confines of one atom. Thus, when we act with any mean-spiritedness or negativity in our thoughts or actions, we literally inhibit the phase transition that will lead us to discover, quote-unquote, fire for the second time in the history of the world. Every single act of hatred or injury towards another is action that keeps us from harnessing the energy of love. Think on that one for a second, ladies and gentlemen. Every single act of hatred or energy towards another is an action that keeps us from harnessing, and I will add, growing and figuring out the ability of this energy of love. It may sound gushy and way too sugary to accomplish but i believe that we can all tame our mean spiritedness spiritedness and bring about this universal phase transition that pierre tellier de chardin predicted was our destiny ladies and gentlemen i am reminded wayne continues of my all-time favorite biblical quotation the famous statement on love in first corinthians 13 which begins if I speak in the tongues of men and, and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. It continues beautifully saying we gain nothing without love. It speaks of the patience and kindness of love and the absence of envy, boasting, rudeness, self-seeking, and how love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. And concludes with this formidable message here. Quote, and now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, even greater than faith and hope is the ability and willingness. See, I think that's a really key point there. The, abiling, the ability, that takes time to work on. You know, and create within ourselves this ability. Sometimes it's very natural for some of us and it's very unnatural for others. So those of us who it is unnatural for, something we have to practice. But then not only <clears throat> the ability, but the willingness for us to cultivate love. How do we cultivate love, Chase or Wayne, you're asking? Well, we can let go of impulses to judge others. We can refuse to feel good about the mistakes or sufferings of anyone, and we can live the lessons of kindness rather than only read about them in church. If we can remove our desire for revenge and replace it with forgiveness, mm, we can choose love wherever and whenever we are simply by making that choice. This energy is so powerful that it literally holds together every cell in our universe. And it is the glue that unites us. Mm. One of our great friends, Robert Browning, Robert Barrett Browning, the amazing and awesome and wonderful poet, described our world without love. He said, quote, take away love and our earth is a tomb. <laughs> 
You know when the energy of love is absent. I mean, think about your own life experience, ladies and gentlemen. Like, it's very easy to know when this energy of love, and we're, I don't think we're talking about romantic love here, ladies and gentlemen, at all. I think we're talking about a, a love that goes beyond romantics, that is more of a, you know, the different kind of love that you can have for all things. That where there is no, you know, romance involved, there is this, there is this different kind of love, this God force, or this power. Now, <laughs> that's so funny, because the next thing he says here is this energy is so powerful that it literally holds every cell together in our universe. It is the glue that unites us. And so that was me saying the same thing again there. And so you can put Teilhard's famous words into work in your own life right now. How do we do that? I mean, this is why you should get this book for yourself, to put it on your bookshelf so you can have it for reference. And I'll have it linked below in the description. All you got to do is click below the video there and expand the description. And it will be right down there for you. But the reason you want to get this, because at the end of each of these chapters, ladies and gentlemen, he gives us a little section here on how we can put each of these wonderful authors and poets and Wayne Dyer's advice into work, into practical action in our own life right now, here today. And in turn, increase the quality of our, li of our lives, ladies and gentlemen. And so here are a few suggestions for harnessing the energies of love in your life. Number one. See yourself as the one cell in this body called humanity that can activate the, the energy for phase transition to universal love. You do not make a difference. <laughs> My mind made a mistake there. You do make a difference, ladies and gentlemen. And every thought of love, followed by an action, moves us a step closer to discovering fire for the second time. So number one was seeing yourself as a part of humanity or one cell in the atom. Whoops, did that wrong. But you know what I mean, ladies and gentlemen. One, one particle of the whole. And it's like, we can be the ones that activate the energy for phase transition and critical mass to love. We do make a difference. And every thought of love followed by an action moves us a step closer to discovering this quote-unquote fire for the second time, this new fire for the first time. Number two here on how we can apply this great wisdom from Pierre Teilhard de Chardin about love into our lives. Push out thoughts of judgment, revenge, anger, and hatred by becoming aware of them as they surface. Simply tell yourself, I don't want to think this way, and I refuse to allow it anymore. That's a mantra I used a lot in the beginning of changing my thoughts. It was, I don't want to think this thought. So what do I want to think? And even doing that will cause your brain to be, your thought process will become confused because it's just trying to automatically solve problems subconsciously. And so if you tell your brain that the thought that you're having is the problem then it goes wait a minute i thought i was already solving problems by trying to think all these negative thoughts to figure out all the problems in our life it's like no 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 <laughs> it's the focus on this negative that is the problem to change the thought then the mind goes huh what do i think that's just my own personal experience it's fun to kind of watch your mind and see what it does think. And then you find yourself often going, what do I think? <laughs> Number three, ladies and gentlemen, when confronted by mean-spiritedness and hateful gossip, respond to it from your position of love. You know, quote, I do not want to make any judgments. Rather than criticizing the mean-spirited person, silently send them love. Project love from your mind onto them. Be the person in any gathering who defends the absent 
in a kindly manner. That one made me want to clap right there. That's so good. I got to put the bookmark in it. Be the person at any gathering, because every one of us in our lives, ladies and gentlemen, goes to family gatherings or get-togethers of some sort, or whether it be a reunion from high school or, you know, any whatever it be, some kind of gathering. And so be the person at these gatherings in your life, ladies and gentlemen, who defends the absent in a kindly manner, rather than criticizing Rather than saying people should be doing things that you think that they should be doing, and then that you're the you know that you are the all-knowing God of the universe, it's like you can tell that one gets to me for some reason. So be the person in any kind of gathering who defends the absent in a kindly manner. Say, oh no, it's you know, it's all good. Like some people get so freaked out about. It. Christmas and birthdays and all of these economical things that we've created for money and wealth building in society that we don't give a dang about peace and happiness and love and togetherness. You know, it's like, well, Sally didn't even show up this year. It's like, who gives a crap? Maybe Sally needs us to send her some love or, you know, um, just to be, you know, more neutral. It's like Sally or Jim or Johnson or whoever. It's like, we just need to start sending people some love, ladies and gentlemen. And maybe we can be the phase transition point of the critical mass using physicist terms. But so number four here. <clears throat> Frame 1 Corinthians 13 in your home, as we have done, Wayne says. I read it every time I walk down the hallway to the children's bedrooms. And it reminds me that the greatest gift I can offer to them and to the world is the universal synthesizer, which is love, ladies and gentlemen. Boom to wisdom. Boom to wisdom of the ages and boom to knowledge. Look at how close we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting so close to the end. Next one is individuality. Coming to us, wow, this is a long poem. It takes up almost two pages. Coming to us from E.E. E. Cummings. Fascinating. This has been so great, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, I think it's very important because most people, when they think about love, unless you're into all this mystical, spiritual, God force kind of, you know, thinking, then you don't really think of love as the ultimate power. The ultimate force. See, God is love. I'm sure you've heard that one. But it's like, what does that mean? And so we described what that meant today here in this video and that wonderful extrapolation from Dr. Wayne Dyer, as well as the little bit of extrapolations I did myself coming to us from Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. And so I really hope you got value out of that, ladies and gentlemen, because it's important to think about this force, this power of love. And so continue in your life to seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment, which means through a greater awareness and a greater understanding. And continue to seek to discover the wisdom of the ages, ladies and gentlemen, because there is thousands of authors and poets and mystics and, you know, theologians and wonderful teachers in the world that have offered us this great wisdom that comes from the ages, comes from anywhere from now through any point in history. And if we take the time in our life to put a little bit of effort into wanting to improve the quality of our life by putting in a little work, by studying a little bit of the wisdom of the ages, ladies and gentlemen, and continue to make happiness the way. Because if happiness is the activity that you bring to life, because remember, there is no way to happiness, ladies and gentlemen, because happiness is the way. And so when we can learn that and figure that out and begin to bring happiness to the present moments of our life, 
and all the goals and the things that we've been striving so tough for and telling ourselves we'll be happy finally when I get there become irrelevant because we're already there, ladies and gentlemen. And then the entire journey going forward is wonderful. All right, thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. I love and appreciate everybody who spends time here with me and Dr. Wayne Dyer and all the wonderful authors and poets of the wisdom of the ages, including Lao Tzu. And as you can see, we're getting towards the end of that book. So be excited for the next chapter or the next book, the next chapter of knowledge that we'll be diving into after we finish this one, ladies and gentlemen, because it's been nine months. You know what that means? We've been in the process of creating something that will soon come to life. <laughs> that was a good metaphor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, expand the description below. Find yourself some beautiful landscape paintings for a quality price. You know, I don't price them for $500. That one's probably like 70 bucks or something. And it's 16 by 20. It's a good size, a beautiful painting. But anyways, that's besides the point. And so also get yourself some C60 Purple Power. It's a great antioxidant supplement I've been using for a number of years now. And no news is good news, ladies and gentlemen. So <laughs> with all of that said, get yourself a copy of this book so you can have it for reference. And that's in the description as well. Thank you for being here. If you got value, leave a comment that says valuable. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll see you next Tuesday and in between now and then we'll do some more short videos. So look forward to those and be sure to comment on those too, ladies and gentlemen, and let me know what you think. All right. Until next time, stay frosty and continue to be the change that you want to see in the world. Go out and be the example of love, the example of the kind of love that we talked about here today. Thank you. Na -na 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 -na.